Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Kings Lynn and West Norfolk series. Based around Kings Lynn, Hunstanton and Downham Market, there's 101 of them in this one. Time to go walking. Welcome back to Kings Lynn and West Norfolk, everybody. Now, today our start and finish point is outside this church right here there you go there's uh, some work going on in that churchyard at the moment so that's gonna actually be the last thing we talk about so the first thing we're going to talk about is this old building which is right next to it that's an old school and on the wall the sign says the old school community heritage project and the hugh kirkham charity and you'll find all of that in the parish of terrington st clement Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Moving further into Norfolk, away from the Lincolnshire border, today we're in Terrington St. Clement. This is often cited as the largest village in Norfolk and the second largest in the entire country. I reckon that's inaccurate because we've been to bigger places than this already. Nonetheless, it's a local claim to fame and the residents of this pretty Norfolk settlement are proud of where they live. Rightly so, because Terrington St. Clement is awesome. The first written record of Terrington St. Clement dates from 970 AD when a local nobleman named Godric granted estates here to the monks of Ramsey Abbey. At that time, the manor was called Turintonia, which by the time of Doomsday had morphed into Tillinghetuna. This would eventually become Terrington. The original meaning probably comes from a personal name, Tira, making this Tira's settlement. It's located about seven miles west of Kings Lynn and lies in an area which was once marshland. Much of the village's surroundings are made up of alluvial silt and clay, which has been reclaimed from the sea to provide rich agricultural farmland. The village has a fascinating history dating back to at least Saxon times, when it was a small settlement on the coast of the Wash. Like Walpole Cross Keys, salt working was the main activity. It's grown a bit since then and is now a popular place for many reasons. Let's have a walk around it and see exactly what they are. Before we start walking around the village, we've got some other areas to cover first. Terrington St. Clement's parish boundaries extend for a long way to both the south and the north of the village, so much so that they border the wash to the north. To the south, they encompass this little place. This is Hay Green, a clustered settlement which lies to the south of the A17. The main Terrington St. Clement village lies to the north of that road. Hay Green has very little documented about it. Here's what I made of it though. It's a nice place, yes, but beware out here if you're driving through it. It's full of narrow, twisty roads, which often have few passing places. It's also on a bus route, which can be fun if you come across one like I did. There's little amenities out here, but Hay Green is where you'll find Moat Road Nursery, a family run business that's been trading for over 30 years. Now let's drive up into the main village and see what that's got. Thank you. 
Our walk begins on Churchgate Way outside an old school. Built in 1818, part of this building also served as a public dispensary, one of the first in the entire country. Extensions were made in 1861 when it became a national school. It eventually became the church hall, but is now no longer used. There are two pubs in the village. Here's the first. This is the King William, which dates back to at least the 1790s. Originally, it was a thatched building with three dormer windows. Once beyond the pub, Church Gateway heads south towards the playing field. That's for later though, and we're now on Marshland Street. This is effectively the central street in Terrington St. Clement. The village has a wide selection of amenities, including a traditional hardware store, a newsagent, a baker's, a chippy, a supermarket, a Chinese takeaway, a hairdresser's, and even an estate agent too. It's all here, folks. So we're already a street and a little bit in, and there's already been plenty to see. We're not even scratching the surface of this one yet, let me tell you. Terrington St. Clement is a very, very big village, and this is a lengthy walk. I've tweaked this route a couple of times because I thought it was too long. So hopefully, fingers crossed, this is still going to catch everything, even though I have slimmed it down from what I originally intended. Let's carry on. This building is the village's old courthouse and police station. Built in 1839, this is currently on the market for the nice price of £230,000. Nearby, there used to be a pub or two. You can see the signboard of one here, which would have been for either the Golden Ball or the County Arms. It was a little hard to pin down exactly which one. Not far away, there's an old phone box, which has seen better days, I'm afraid. It's currently empty. As Marshland Street continues south, you come to Terrington Veterinary Centre. This is one of the most highly regarded vets in the whole of Norfolk. Now we've taken a right turn up Wesley Road. This is Hodgson's Forge, founded by John Fendley Hodgson in 1918. They specialise in restoring ironwork and are one of the best at doing so in the entire country. Not far away on the opposite side of the road is the main village shop, a large co-op store. Okay, in a moment we're going to hit a crossroads and essentially we're going straight over them crossroads. But I do need to just dive to the left to begin with because there's a chapel of some description up that road. So we'll nip down there, grab that, come back to the crossroads and then carry on straight over them. Now, as Methodist churches go, this one books a certain trend we've come to expect from such buildings. This one is still active, but it's not the original building. It was founded in 1844, but you don't need to be a genius to know that this isn't a 19th century building. The original church has been demolished, and a new one was built on the very same site in 2005. Only the adjoining graveyard behind it gives you any clues as to its predecessor. Once past the chapel, we're now into a residential area as we make our way through the western part of the village. Most of these areas are new builds, but Wanton Lane has been around for a bit longer. On it, we find a business with some railway-like gates. That's BSP Auto Specialists. Wanton Lane then bends to the left as we start to make our way back through the village to where we began. For some reason, I like this house. I've no idea why. You know, sometimes residential areas can be really uninteresting and really boring. But here in Terrington St. Clement, I have to say, the one I've just walked around has been absolutely beautiful. Loved it. Okay, we're now on Sutton Road. We're gonna carry on down here, back in towards the village center. There's a few other things, other landmarks we need to catch along here. And then we're gonna sort of head sort of up towards the northeast. On Sutton Road is another old school. This was built in 1870 by William Ward as a parochial school for girls. He lived and farmed at Emorsgate Farm. There's more on him later. Not far past that, part of the road is recessed to the left, which suggests that Sutton Road was straightened at some point. On this stretch, there's a pharmacy as well as Terrington service station. 
Now, as well as selling fuel, this is also an MOT and repair garage too. Remember, this was the old route of the A17 after all. At 21 Sutton Road, dead opposite, you'll find this grand old house. There's not a lot to say about it really, but I thought it was nice. Next, we have the Wild Fowler Pub. Stylish and friendly, this came under new ownership in June 2022. Theme nights and musical entertainment are held here on a regular basis. Just past the pub is an old shop, Mundy's, which still has its gorgeous old signs and frontage, despite the fact it's now a house. Okay, not much left, on the walk at least anyway. Our next job is to head across the playing field, which you can see in the distance beyond the village sign that you would have seen in today's thumbnail. We're going to cross there, and then we'll head towards the church last. This is Terrington's Memorial Park, which remembers those lost in the World Wars. 15 men in total. In the middle of it, there's a cross surrounded by a garden. It's on the edge of the Memorial Field. Terrington Tigers Football Club call this place their home, and there's also a bowls club in this park too. Just outside the park, there's a parish notice board. You can tick off Terrington St. Clement from your Kings Lynn and West Norfolk lists, guys. We're down to 99. This area also has Terrington's Tennis Club, which has seven teams in the North West Norfolk Tennis League. Three men's, two ladies and two mixed. Once past the tennis courts and the small playground, you're then on Ben's Lane, where you can pick up a long straight footpath which leads directly to the church. As I approached it from here, I couldn't help think to myself that it looked a bit like a cathedral. It turns out my thinking was spot on. Now, the thing with churches is, if you stood right next to them, you can definitely appreciate their beauty. But sometimes, if you're a long way from them, you can also do that. And that is especially true of this church here in Terrington St. Clement. Look at it. Very interesting architectural look. I can see at least three separate stages to it, plus the tower. This is going to be interesting to talk about. Dedicated to St. Clement, this church is known as the Cathedral of the Marshland, and isn't it magnificent? Dating from the 14th century, originally it was erected by Edmund Gonville, the founder of Gonville and Caius College, Cambridge. Its most interesting historic feature is its early 17th century font cover, painted with biblical scenes. It also has a Georgian nave screen and wonderful 15th century grotesque carvings around its exterior. Note as well that its tower is not actually attached to the main building, instead it's freestanding. That's very unusual and is one of the reasons that it's one of those churches I would have loved to have explored on the inside. Unfortunately though, it wasn't open. Nonetheless, it's a breathtaking building and it lies within Terrington's conservation area, which covers the village's most historic landmarks. And you can't deny that Terrington St. Clement's Church certainly ticks that box. I've got to tell you, ladies and gents, that's one of the most impressive churches I think I've ever seen whilst I've been doing TVI. That is saying something considering some of the places we've already been. Okay, that's the main walk uh, come to a close. As you can see, my car is parked here outside the old school. Church is just off to the left. So we've made it all the way around Terrington St. Clement. However, we are not done with this place just yet because I need to hop into the car now and take you around some of the other places to the north. That white house, by the way, opposite the old school where I started and finished, is called Old Beams and it's another former pub. This drive will first take us towards and into the Village Hall car park, which is shared with St. Clement's High School. It's a strange setup, but somehow it works. The Village Hall is located within its grounds and it's accessed via the school's main gate. The school and Village Hall are built on an old school playing field. The school in question was called the Central School, which still stands. It's directly opposite the Village Hall, and you can see it here as I drive back out. It dates from 1931 and replaced the former National Building, which then became the Church Hall. It's now Terrington St. Clement Community School. 
I tell you, with all these schools, that took some understanding. Next, we have Northgate, which is a bit easier to understand. Up here, you'll come across Northgate Park, a small industrial estate, which is the base of SciChem. As an aid to the education sector, they supply equipment for school science laboratories. Next, we have Ben's Lane, which was closed halfway down, but luckily what I was after here was still accessible. That's the fire station. Terrington's fire station was set up in 1885 and it still stands today, proudly displaying the words Norfolk Fire Service over its door. Ben's Lane is otherwise a large residential area and so too are the rest of these northern village areas. It's mad to think how big the village is now compared to centuries ago. Substantial drainage of the land and reclamation from the sea not only increased the area available for agriculture, but also for housing. To the west of the main village you'll find Terrington's most impressive building, Terrington Court. It was originally named Hammond Lodge after its builder, Sir Andrew Snape Hammond, who built it in 1810. The house is in the Elizabethan style and had a magnificent park which has been extensively restored by its present owner. In the garden stands an impressive oriental plain, one of the finest specimens in the country. Sir Andrew Hammond was captain of HMS Roebuck during the American War of Independence and he went on to be the governor of Nova Scotia. Sir Andrew and his wife are interred in the family vault at St Clement's Church. His coat of arms is even included in the village sign, seen here. In 1860, David Ward, a solicitor, lived in the house. His father was William Ward, the man who built the parochial school. It later belonged to the Church of England Temperance Society and for a short time was a home for inebriate women. And after that epic walk around and drive around, Terrington St. Clement has the ideal place to just come and sit and chill and reflect on what you've seen. That would be the Millennium Wood, which you can find on Sandy Gate Lane. Here we go. Got a nice little open green space, nice bit of car parking. There's some seats, picnic area. And here you can see it says Millennium Wood under this magnificent tree. So I'm just going to sit here for a few minutes and recharge my batteries while I get ready for the next one here in Kings Lynn and West Norfolk. And I do hope you have enjoyed this one. I know I have. I knew it was going to be a long route round and quite a, an arduous task to get round Terrington St. Clement, but I think I've managed it um, quite well, actually, in the end. Beautiful place. And if this is a sign of what's to come in Norfolk, I'm quite excited.
I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot. This has been the parish of Terrington, St. Clement, and I'm out.